Welcome to worship on this seventh Sunday, the seventh and final Sunday in the season of Easter. Thank you for gathering, Spirit of Joy, partners and friends in Sioux Falls and wherever you are throughout the country, we're grateful that you are here again with us for this time of worship. Once again, we pray that as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our source of hope in this time that can seem pretty hopeless, we pray that you will be renewed and refreshed by the good news uh, that comes to us from God's word. We're especially pleased today that Pastor Christy Hollenbeck Ask is uh, back and she'll be preaching this morning back after uh, her maternity leave and we're so excited for her and her husband John to welcome their baby Anya uh, into their family and into our family as well. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Greetings to you in the name of our mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one God trustworthy and true, the firstborn of the dead, the calm in chaos, rest for the overworked, love for the overlooked, and breath for the overwhelmed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, just give me Jesus. When I come to die, when I come to die, oh, when I come to die, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world. Give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this world, you can have all this world, you can have all this world, just give me Jesus. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, 
that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace peace of the Lord Lord be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Well, good morning. Welcome to worship today. As you can tell, I'm, I'm outside and the church is behind me and I was looking up at the sky. Do you ever like to look up at the sky? And maybe there's some interesting clouds up there and hopefully the sun is gonna shine again pretty soon. And the story I'm gonna tell you today from the Bible has to do with looking up into the sky. Did you know that every year, 40 days after Easter, we celebrate a day called the Ascension of our Lord? You might remember in church when we say the Apostles' Creed, one of the lines in that about Jesus says, He ascended into heaven. He ascended into heaven. And that's what this story is about today and about His disciples watching Jesus go back to heaven. It's on page 498 in your Spark Story Bible, and Michelle has put together some fun resources for you. Um, So I hope you'll take a look at those that came with your link today in your email for worship. And the story is called The Ascension. After Jesus died and rose again, he and his disciples got together near Jerusalem And Jesus had some instructions for them. As you know, Jesus said, God is doing amazing things in the world. And your help is needed. We need you to go tell stories about me. Tell your friends and family and everyone you meet what you've learned by following me. Be my witnesses in the world. He said that and suddenly Jesus was rising up into the air. What was going on? He was being lifted up into a cloud. Jesus' friends looked around. Two men in white robes had joined them and the men said, why are you just standing around looking up toward heaven? Don't worry, Jesus will come back someday. Right, said one of Jesus' disciples. Meanwhile, we've got some work to do. Let's get going. So Jesus' friends had watched Jesus go back into heaven, but Jesus had told them what to do, to tell everybody about God's love, to tell them the stories about Jesus' life. Can you think of a favorite story about Jesus' life that you know? Maybe the story about when he was born in Bethlehem Maybe a story about how a little boy had a couple of fish and some bread and Jesus took it and blessed it and shared it with so many people. Maybe you have a favorite story about Jesus. I hope today you'll remember that story and share it with someone just like Jesus asked us to do. When you're outside later, Take a look up in the air and remember this story about the day that Jesus ascended into heaven. Have a beautiful day. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for being with us always. Thank you again for sending your spirit to us to live within us and remind us how much you love us. Help us to be witnesses. Help us to tell your stories. And all God's children said, Amen. The lesson this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. Today's reading is part of the introduction to the narrative of the outpouring of the Spirit on Pentecost. These verses tell of the risen Lord's conversation with his disciples on the eve of his ascension, in which he promises that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, 
It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood before them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prepare, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this morning comes from the Gospel of St. John, the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you've given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you've given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear siblings in Christ, Grace and peace are yours this day from God, our creator, from Jesus, our savior, and from the Holy Spirit who breathes life in and among us. Amen. Last week, my husband John got a new hiking pack and while showing it off to me in his glee, he insisted that I try it on to share in his joy. So I hoisted the pack on my back and after doing so, I instinctively put my right hand on my belly, and I just about said, Anya, get ready for adventures. For that split second, I forgot that our baby girl, Anya, was no longer here inside of me. 
At the moment, she wasn't here. She was there, upstairs in our house, taking a nap. By that point, it had been 11 weeks that she had been there and not here. And now in these 12 weeks it's been, I've come to know and to love Anya's evolving face and her hair and her fingers and her wiggling legs. Now I get to watch her movement instead of feel her movement inside of me, which was sometimes to my discomfort anyway. If given the choice, I do far prefer to interact with her, to look at her face to face. I love seeing her raise her right arm as though she's conducting an orchestra or asking a question. And yet once in a while, there is an aching inside. There is a sadness that she is no longer here, where she came along wherever I went, where she baked with me and toward the end of my pregnancy, where she struggled up the stairs with me. And most of all, I miss that here was where I could protect her without hardly trying. It was where I could trust that she would be safe as long as I didn't eat raw chicken or fall down the stairs. For the most part, at least, I thought that. If I wanted to quickly make sure she was okay, I could just give her a little nudge and she'd give me a little nudge back. Less than three months into parenting, and as you can see, I'm already learning how this whole journey brings endless joy and endless grief. In this morning's passage from the book of Acts that you heard Tom read, Jesus ascends to the heavens. Apparently, the internet has cleverly reminded us this week that the ascension is that moment when Jesus starts working from home. It's when he finally moves from where the disciples knew him to be. Our story takes place 40 days after Easter, after Jesus was crucified and then was risen from the dead. Just a a month and a half prior to this moment today, to the ascension, the disciples grieved as their Lord and teacher was crucified before them. And then three days after that, they had rejoiced at the news and the sight of his resurrection. But now at at the ascension, just when the disciples have gotten reacquainted with the resurrected Jesus, when they're settling into the celebration of life together again with him. It's then that Jesus leaves them, and he leaves them for good this time, at least in one sense, he leaves them. Jesus, this teacher with whom they could once talk and walk, and to whom they could ask their most burning questions about God and faith and life, He ascends before their eyes to never walk beside them again, at least literally. As Pastor Jeff said in our leadership team meeting this week, as we were together reading this story, the story of the ascension is an end. It's even more of an ending than the crucifixion or the resurrection. It's the end of Jesus's physical time on earth for the disciples and for us after the ascension nothing will ever be like it was. Jesus will never be where he once was in one sense. His disciples will never know him in the same way they did. The story resonates deeply with me in this moment in my life Our little Anya will never be inside of me again. Her entrance into the outside world has forever changed my life and my body and my dreams and my outlook on life. There are many things that will never be the same for me. There's so much to celebrate about that. I certainly wouldn't want uh, her to come back inside because it was a lot of work getting her out, I will say. There's a lot to celebrate about her life on the outside, and yet there is still some that I grieve to. And in some similar ways, our story resonates with our faith community and with our world. Saying that things have changed is certainly a gross understatement, as I now preach on a Friday afternoon to one person, Audrey, our spirit of joy hero and communications coordinator. Things have changed. So many things have changed 
things we held dear. Some things have changed forever, and none of us knows yet what those things will be. We grieve all that we have lost. We grieve being together. We grieve seeing family and friends in three-dimensional form. We grieve traveling and making plans. Maybe you are grieving people you have directly lost from COVID-19. Maybe you grieve seeing anyone at all in person. Maybe you grieve your employment or your financial security. And maybe like the disciples at the Ascension, you grieve the place where you always knew God to be and the form you always knew God to take. In our story today, the disciples watch as Jesus is lifted up. Jesus is taken out of their sight before their very eyes. And so when two guys in white robes show up and ask them, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? I want to say, why wouldn't they be standing up and looking toward heaven? That is literally where he just went. Forty days ago, he was murdered, and then he rose from the dead, and then he came back, and they reunited with him and celebrated together. These men of Galilee can probably hardly keep track of Jesus, their teacher and leader. They're trying to keep up with him when he leaves before their eyes. So, of course, they're looking toward heaven. That's where they last saw him. And they're probably grieving as they look, grieving that Jesus is not there with them, walking among them and teaching them, grieving that their teacher and friend is gone and will never return to live among them in the same way grieving that their lives have changed in ways they can't even imagine yet, wondering what it even means to be a disciple now or what it looks like. And maybe they're wondering where God is when God no longer walks among them in the physical sense. These questions, this wondering sounds familiar to me, and maybe this wondering sounds familiar to you too. These are some questions I'm asking now, and maybe you are too, including other questions. What does it look like to follow Jesus in this new normal? How do we love our neighbors from a six-foot distance? How do we love our neighbors and keep ourselves and our families safe as we do? And who is spirit of joy when we're not together on La Quinta Street? What does it mean to do life together when we're apart How will our community be forever changed? Not just from this pandemic, but now because even on that joyous day when we do gather again on La Quinta Street, it will be a different space and our worship might take a different shape. And in the midst of all these questions, maybe you're asking, where is God? Where is God? When you've lost the places, maybe even this, fundamental place where you knew God to be? Where is God in the midst of your grief and your uncertainty? Just like the disciples in Acts suspect, had Jesus stayed where you last saw him, now in a place that you can no longer access in the same way? Maybe you're asking, is God absent, or at the very least, just forever out of reach? These are real and valid questions. For some of these questions, there is no answer yet, and there may not be for a while. Yet, to the question, where is God, here today, that there is an answer. God is here, and God is there, wherever you are. God is still in the place where you last knew God to be, and God has followed you to where you are now. God is among God's gathered people right now, even if gathered now means something different. And in just a few minutes, Jesus, God, will be there and will be here and there in bread and in wine, even if that bread and wine or juice come from your own pantry, and the words of blessing and institution come from your own mouth. In our Acts text, Jesus tells the disciples that after he ascends, they will receive power from the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit comes upon them. 
Jesus says, they, the disciples, will be his witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Even when he leaves them, he is saying they will not be alone. The Holy Spirit will live and breathe among them, and they will become the presence of Jesus in all the world. And so it is today. To the question, where is God? The answer is God is wherever God's work of healing is being done. God is at Avera and Sanford among the sick and the dying and in care centers also. God is there in those places through the work of janitors and nurses and doctors and medical technicians and assistants. God is with family members who cannot be near their loved ones right now. God is among teachers and students whose classrooms have taken entirely new forms. God is among exhausted parents and lonely elders. God is wherever you are right now. In the same way, Spirit of Joy is now wherever you are and wherever the work of the Holy Spirit is happening. Spirit of Joy is on Facebook and YouTube and in mailboxes where now several of our high school ministry partners and older ministry partners are now connecting over the summer as pen pals. Spirit of Joy is at the banquet and is with necessities for neighbors. Spirit of Joy is in Arizona and Maryland and California and Washington, thanks to the ways digital worship is expanding our community. Spirit of Joy is not the same as she was. She is certainly not the same place or form I left before my maternity leave. And yet, as the people of Spirit of Joy, you and me, our identity as God's people is ever true. And our call remains the same, to love God and to love our neighbors and to be people of radical hospitality, lifelong faith formation, extravagant generosity, bold service, and passionate worship. So God bless you, Spirit of Joy. Know that God is with you in this day, wherever you are. And know that I am so glad to be back with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. good news to the poor, to bind up the broken heart, and make you known even more, so that people living in darkness will see the great I'll be the carrier of light to the world. I'll be the carrier of hope and salvation. I will go shine your light to the world. I will go shine your light to the world. Bye.
of light to the world. I'll be the carrier of hope and salvation. I will go shine your light to the world. I will go shine your light to the world. I We confess our faith together now using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the, of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to hear you call to all people to live as one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, lo the love of our neighbors, and hope in your merciful rule and reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. Direct the research of scientists who are working to discover ways to stop COVID-19 and find cures to other illnesses. Make us attentive to the expertise of those who offer wise and safe ways through the global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour out your healing power on those who are sick and suffering in body, mind, or spirit today. Strengthen all who are working to provide healing and care, counselors, nurses, therapists, doctors, spouses and children, social workers, pastors, physicians assistants, and nurse practitioners. Protect all who are vulnerable, especially in nations where health care is available to only some of your people. Grant help and healing to Jean, Lisa, Tom, Jerry, Grayson, Matt, Jordan, Jana, Sheila and Peter, Dennis, Marge, Amy, and others we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of glory, both the living and dead are in your hands. On this Memorial Day weekend, we give you thanks for all those who have laid down their lives in the service of our country in Europe and the South Pacific, on the Korean Peninsula and in Vietnam, in Iraq and in Afghanistan, and our own soil. Comfort family members and friends who continue to mourn their deaths. Show us how to live in a way that honors both their sacrifice and the Lord who laid down his life for our sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you have sent the Holy Spirit to make us witnesses to the mercy and grace of Jesus the Christ for all people. Lead your church in this unprecedented time of illness and separation. Show us the opportunities available to us now for sharing hope and healing that comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Almighty God, protect all construction workers who are laboring to expand Spirit of Joy's building. Stir our congregation's imagination so that we will recognize new ways to expand our hospitality, welcome, teaching and learning, generosity and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, welcome to worship today. Thank you again for uh, being here with us. We continue to be grateful for your presence wherever you are and however you're watching. Our leaders continue to be in conversation about uh, our way forward through these days of pandemic. And we are in initial conversations about possibly offering uh, worship in our parking lot sometime in the coming weeks. We will, as we make more decisions about that, we, we will be sure and let you know, but we will be making some decisions going forward in uh, the coming weeks and month. Construction here is happening. We have some pictures for you to see again the progress. It's, uh, things are topsy-turvy both inside and outside the building. And after Memorial Day now, you'll be seeing some of the outside wall goes, uh, walls go up and some real changes on our property. Thank you for your support of this project. We continue to pray that this expansion of our physical space will also mean an expansion of our hospitality an expansion of our uh, generosity, an expansion of opportunities for learning uh, and teaching as well. One announcement, uh, next Sunday is the day of Pentecost, one of the great festivals in the church year when uh, we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on God's people. You will receive in uh, constant contact sometime in the coming week an announcement about uh, a Pentecost pinwheel parade. We're going to invite you to come on uh, the morning of the day of Pentecost between uh, some hours on Sunday morning. We'll have pinwheels for all of you. We'll have uh, some take-home uh, devotions. Just a chance <clears throat> for us to celebrate with you in a safe way. We'll ask people to stay in their cars and, uh, and drive around as we share uh, some gifts in a safe way with you. So our Pentecost pinwheel parade, that is next Sunday. Look for uh, more information in constant contact, your email, uh, and also on our website um, midweek next week. Again this morning, we invite you uh, to share your tithes and offerings. I get the offering baskets out just as a symbolic way of saying uh, we really appreciate, we have um, been blessed by the support of our partners and also other guests who have been worshiping with us in these ways. And because you continue to support our ministry, our ministry continues. Um, at the banquet, uh, passing out uh, quilts on the, uh, uh, in the driveways of our high school graduates, milestones are continuing, um, adult faith formation is continuing. So thank you for your gifts. You can give uh, via, if you receive an offering envelope, you can put a check in the mail and mail it to us. We continue to receive those uh, every week. We receive those gifts. Thank you for that. You can also go to our website, www.spiritofjoy.net. Spirit of Joy is one word, .net. Look for the Give um, banner at the top of the homepage and follow the instructions. You can give uh, through uh, the homepage in that way, and thank you for those gifts. Once again this morning, we will invite you to share the Lord's Supper. And if you want to pause the video uh, right now and, and go uh, and bring some bread to wherever you're worshiping, uh, whatever kind of bread you have in your house would be fine. You're also invited to bring uh, some wine or some uh, juice. 
uh, grape juice or other kinds of juice as we prepare to eat and drink. Last week I said that in this unusual time of unusual circumstances, uh, God's people are permitted to eat and drink in this way. We are hungry, hungry for God's grace and God's mercy. And we trust that even this way, God comes to us with mercy and grace uh, through the sacrament of Holy Communion. When the time comes, you'll be invited to uh, speak the words of institution, which will be on the screen, and again, speak the words of distribution, and there will be time for you to do that. Let's continue now with the words of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And now at this time, as we have made ready bread and wine here, you're invited to remember what happened on the night Jesus was betrayed and to share bread and wine, this meal of grace and forgiveness with one another. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders, and let me walk upon
keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul rest in your embrace i am yours and you are Remember that you are a child of God, beloved by God, named and claimed by God, and held fast in God's arms. And let us pray together now the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with God's favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the world of many voices calling at me It's hard to hear the one that's true Even when I hear it, when When my heart discerns it, I lack the will to see it through. Though I'm falling, falling, the voice is always calling, take up your cross, take Take up your cross and follow the words redeemed inside of me. I find myself so troubled to lose my life, be humble. Sins within refuse to see. Though I'm falling, falling, the voice is always calling, take. always calling Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Share the good news.